My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. Over the last couple of months, I've been asked by multiple viewers about the proper way to pack your backpack. And while I have some older videos covering this topic, it's a good time to refresh this topic. This video is going to benefit not only those who are new to backpacking, but also existing backpackers. You may be wondering why that is. Plain and simple, there is a right way and a wrong way to pack your backpack. Do it right and you'll be hiking mile after mile with no issues. Do it incorrectly and you'll be counting every single footstep until the hike is over. And that's because your backpack is uncomfortable. First things first, everybody, it's important to know that this episode is all about how to pack your backpack properly and the science behind it. I'm going to explain every single aspect and I'll explain at the same time why something works, why something else doesn't work, and why each component has its own specific zone that it needs to go into. While having your backpack packed correctly is very important, it's not the ultimate factor when it comes to comfort. You do need to make sure that you have a backpack that fits you correctly. At the same time, you need a backpack that features the proper cushion, the proper harness system, and so on. If you have a poorly designed backpack, it doesn't matter how you pack it, it's still going to be uncomfortable. Packing it correctly is certainly going to help, but it's not going to change the fact that your backpack is uncomfortable from the get-go or doesn't fit correctly. That's why you need to have a well-designed backpack and it needs to fit you properly. The first thing that I wanna do in this episode is focus your attention on my backpack here. When it comes to backpacks in general, they will feature eight zones. Starting at the very top of the backpack, we have the outer top and then we have the inner top. The outer top, usually deals with some straps, some loops, you can compress items on top, maybe a jacket, maybe a sleeping pad. Then we have the inner lid pockets. The next zones are the side pockets of your backpack. You can put hydration bottles in the side pockets, you can put trekking poles in there, and miscellaneous gear, whatever you wanna do. The next zone deals with the front of the backpack. This is considered the middle of the pack. Some backpacks will feature an outer pocket. The next zone is on the back side. That is considered the middle front of a backpack. We're talking about the inside of the backpack on the front side. Then we have the back of the middle of the pack. That is what's closest to your back on the inside of your backpack. The next zone is the bottom of the backpack where your sleeping bag, your sleeping pad, and your pillow go. Some backpacks will have a dedicated compartment where other backpacks do not, and you would access this zone by going through the top. The next zone, some backpacks will have compression straps so that you can attach gear to the bottom. Designs do vary as far as this last zone goes. Sometimes the compression straps will be in front of the sleeping bag compartment, and at other times, they'll be on the very bottom of the backpack. Those are the eight different zones that make up the storage space inside of your backpack and outside of it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that you know what the zones are, let's go ahead and let's break down this backpack and everything that I have inside of it. This pack has been set up for an average overnight trip, with one exception. I did forget my first aid kit. If I had brought it with me, it would be in this top pocket here, top inner pocket. Speaking of which, let's just go ahead, let's start up here at the top, and we'll work our way down through the different zones. And I'll show you all what I have packed inside of this backpack, and I'll explain why I have it packed where I do. Also, I'll explain the science behind that. So let's go up here to the top and let's get started. Going to the top inner pocket here, I would have my first aid kit here, I have my power kit here, and I would keep other items that I need to have quick access to. Maybe a like face mask glove kit, something like that. The top pocket here is for lightweight items. Items that you may need more often than the rest of your gear. Now we're going down to the side pockets and this is where I keep my water bottles. Additionally, you can of course fit other gear, whatever you want to. Obviously, this pack does not have a middle front pocket. If it did, that would be for small, lightweight items as well. So, going to the middle inside of the pack, I have a ton of gear, a ton of heavy, large pieces of gear. Every single piece has been loaded very specifically based upon its weight and also its level of need as far as like when you're out hiking, backpacking and whatnot, what are the odds of you needing to access that item? So what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to pull everything out and then I'm gonna load it back in and I'll show you all where every single component goes and I'll explain why that is. So what I have here is my cook kit fire kit. This includes stove, pot, fork, fuel, so on and so forth. Food bag, coffee bag, trash bag. Here I have a tarp. Here I have a cordage bag with tent stakes for the tarp. And I could use that for other purposes as well. 
Here I have a chair. In the very center of the pack, I have my tent. On the side, I have a table. Now it's time to move over to the last compartment, and this is the sleeping bag storage area. The sleep system storage area. Because this compartment is so large, I can fit not only my sleep system, but items that I may need quickly, such as my rain jacket, my rain pants, here's my sleep system, sleeping pad, pillow, insulation layer. This is a quilt blanket. What you're looking at here is all of the gear that was inside of this 65 liter backpack. For summertime use, for warmer conditions, I like 65 liters. For myself, that's the bare minimum. You can go, or I, I guess I should say, I could go with a lower liter pack, but I prefer to have the extra space. It's always better to have more space than not enough. For wintertime use, I like 75 liters, if at all possible, but I could definitely make a 65 liter work, even in the wintertime. So everything I have here is what I would use on an overnight trip or even a multi-day trip. And as you saw there, all of this gear fit very easily inside of this backpack. This backpack is not stuffed to the gills. I have plenty of space left over for additional gear, additional clothing, additional food, and so on. I get asked all the time how I'm able to carry so much gear inside of these relatively small backpacks. And I will show you all how that is. Basically, it boils down to this. You have to have the right size backpack. Also, you have to pack it correctly. I have plenty of luxuries here, and I could certainly go without them if I wanted to. Yes, they do add quite a bit of weight to this system here, but luckily, I'm packing it in a way where I don't even notice the weight. That's one of the reasons why packing up your gear is so important. You have to load up the pack the correct way. If you do so, you can carry all of this weight and more, and you're not really going to notice it. If you pack it incorrectly, you will notice it. And as you're hiking along, you're going to be feeling every single step. You're going to be thinking about nothing more than, I cannot wait to take this backpack off. That's why loading up your pack is so important. There are a few points that I should make before we begin packing up the system here. Most backpacks do have hip belt pockets. These are not counted as far as the zones go. Oftentimes, hip belt pockets don't really amount to much space. Oftentimes, they're not even usable. You might be able to fit your phone in there, maybe your keys, maybe a bar, but that's about it for most backpacks. Next, everybody, it goes without saying that you need a backpack that is large enough to hold all of your gear. At the same time, you need a backpack that fits you properly. Before you go out and purchase a backpack, make sure to measure your torso length and make sure to find a backpack that fits that torso length. Next, when it comes to loading up your backpack, it is vital to have as much of your gear on the inside of the pack as possible. Your backpack, every backpack is designed to have the weight on the inside of the pack not on the outside. When you take gear and you attach it to the outside of the pack, you're putting stresses on the entire system, including the harness system. You're pulling the weight of the system away from you. I will talk more about this in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and let's load up this backpack. When you're loading up your backpack full of gear, this is a process that is known by two different terms and both work, structuring or building. The building term, in my opinion, makes a lot of sense because it's very similar to like building a house, for an example. You have to start with a good foundation because you're going to put all that weight on top of it and you want that weight to stay in place, right? Because of that, let's go ahead and let's start with the sleeping bag compartment. Sleeping bag in. Because this compartment's so big, sleeping pad in. Pillow in. And again, because this pocket is so large, I could put my rain gear in as well. That way, if I need it in a hurry, I know where it's at and I can access it quickly. Now that the foundation has been set, let's move to the middle of the pack where the heaviest of items go, the largest of items go. We need to start here with a hypothetical. If you're going to carry your water in a hydration bladder, you need to insert this first and it needs to go in the middle of the pack towards the back, the closest part to your back. And that's because you want the heaviest of items as close to your back as possible. You want it right in the middle of your spine. When you have heavy weight close to your back, you're going to feel it less. If you have the heavy weight further away from the back of the pack towards the front, it's going to pull on the harness system and it's going to make your back hurt. This is one of the most vital key aspects to building your loadout 
to structuring your pack to loading up your backpack. If you don't have the heaviest of components right next to your back, your backpack will not be as comfortable as it could be. Your tent is typically going to be your heaviest component on the inside of the pack here. So go ahead and put that in the center of the pack on the back side. That way it's as close to your back as possible. Now you need to build around it. In this case, I'll put in my chair. Then I'll put in my table. And now I will begin putting components in front of those items there, such as my tarp. Portage back. Taking a look on the inside here, again, you can see the heaviest of items towards the back of the pack towards my spine. The lighter items in front of those items here. This tarp here is like one and a half pounds. It's not very heavy. This tent here is three pounds, pretty heavy. The chair, two pounds. Table, two pounds, something like that. Food bag in. My cook kit on top because this tends to be rather heavy. Compression strap, seal up the top. We'll put the lid into place. Now you would put your smaller, lighter items in your front pocket. In this case, I don't have one, so I'm going to move up here to the top of the pack. Lastly, we'll put in our water bottles. And that, my friends, is how you pack a backpack correctly. That is going to give you the very best performance from your backpack. The most important thing that you need to keep in mind is that you gotta keep the heaviest of items that you have as close to your back as possible. That way, those heavy items become a part of you instead of a negatively affecting external force. A little while ago, I spoke about not attaching items to the outside of your backpack. If at all possible, your gear needs to go on the inside of your pack because you're going to get the best performance that way at the same time, you're not going to lose or damage your gear if it's on the inside of your backpack. Your backpack should be large enough to contain all of the gear that you need to carry with you. Just because you have lashing points on the outside of your backpack doesn't mean that you should use them. Not for heavy items, at least. For an example, you do not want to put your tent on the outside of your backpack. What you're doing is taking a heavy item and you're putting it on the outside of your backpack, far away from your spine, and this is going to have negative consequences. Not only on the harness system, you're gonna feel it more in the shoulders, but it's gonna make your back hurt as well. Generally speaking, about the only acceptable item to attach to the outside of your backpack is a closed cell foam sleeping mat. Generally speaking, these are rather large, they're rather bulky, and they weigh absolutely nothing. So if you're going to attach one of those to the top of your pack, to the bottom, that's fine because it doesn't weigh anything. Also, something like that would take up a ton of space on the inside of your backpack. Outside of that, and maybe a sweater, a jacket, you need to keep all of your gear on the inside of your pack. Here's a question for you all. Have you ever seen someone hiking with a tent attached to the bottom of their backpack? With every step that they took, that tent hit them in the I have, and it's funny. That's one reason, one more reason, why you do not attach a tent to the bottom of your pack. The placement is all wrong, and it's a great way to scream to the world, hey, I am inexperienced in the outdoor space. I do not know what I'm doing. Going back to a point that I made at the beginning of this episode, you need to have a backpack that's large enough for your gear. If you're having to attach gear on the outside, your pack is too small for the gear that you have with you. Maybe you want to invest in lighter weight, smaller gear, or simply get a larger backpack. It is my hope that you have found this episode helpful. This is how you pack your backpack so that you get the best performance from your backpack. Loading up your backpack any way but this way will result in a backpack that's less comfortable. If you have enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate it. It's a great way to support this channel. If you do want to become a member, you can support the channel on Patreon and here on YouTube, you can join the Wolf Pack. Oh yeah. Folks, take care, be well, strength and honor, enjoy your backpacking and have a good time. Be safe out there. Take care, everybody. Be well.